for i consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us right we we know these verses whatever verse i'm going to read almost everybody knows it but we most of the time do not know when to apply these verses right this is the right time during difficult times let us have the perception of god looking beyond things what he is seeing because whenever we focus on the distressful situation we will see the huge wall a big fire we will always see the goliath but we want to see how david looked into he had the vision of god so i will read the second verse which is from second corinthians 4:17 to 18 for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal gracious god we thank you for this wonderful time thank you for your wonderful fellowship you have given us lord we are handful lord but you have done more powerful and amazing things lord in our lives we are so grateful for that thank you for your will in our lives and nothing is invincible lord thank you for that message at this moment lord we pray that you talk deeply your words into our hearts directly to us and to each and every other individual help this message to grow deep in our minds lord you speak we hear and follow it in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen we will continue to look into the book of james the overall theme for this book as you know it is real faith produces genuine works and we are almost into the end of this book wherein we have looked into real faith produces genuine stability and we have looked into how real faith produces genuine love last time we saw how real faith produces genuine humility and today we will look into how real faith produces genuine patience if you look into the verses what james have written he is asking the question if we claim to believe like we should why do we behave like we shouldn't if you claim to believe like you should why do you behave like you shouldn't this is the question james is posting to every other reader though this book of james was written to the first century jewish believers who were undergoing a lot of persevering through hardship trying to maintain good work ethics and trying to have peacefulness in the church and living a patient life in anticipation of God's second return this message is even 
applicable to us today that is the reason we always say say the word of the god is active and alive see this this message written to those people for this reason those people during that first century they knew about jesus and the way of life he has taught but they needed a step by step guidance to walk in the way of life it is the same for us today it was the same yesterday and it will be the same tomorrow so today we will be looking into how faith real faith produces genuine patience how the distress the trials we are facing or challenging our faith james he is encouraging people that the suffering that we are undergoing is under the light of this large second coming so he encourages us how to face this distressful period to this we will read from James chapter 5 verses 7 to 12 James chapter 5 verses 7 to 12 be patient then brothers and sisters until the lord's coming see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains you too be patient and stand firm because the lord's coming is near don't grumble against one another brothers and sisters or you will be judged the judge is standing at the door brothers and sisters as an example of patience in the face of suffering take the prophets who spoke in the name of the lord as you know we count as blessed those who have persevered you have heard of job's perseverance and have seen what the lord finally brought about the lord is full of compassion and mercy above all my brothers and sisters do not swear not by heaven or by earth or by anything else all you need to say is a simple yes or no otherwise you will be condemned see when we look into these verses and when we look around us what is happening today this is very very apt if you look into the niv bible this section from 7 to 12 it says suffering sorry patience in suffering and in the nlt version it says patience and endure we always lack this wonderful thing patience if somebody is doing something wrong to us either intentionally or accidentally we always 
want to retaliate it happens to every other person it happens to me it happens to you and it happens to every other person we have all undergone or experienced mistreatment and misunderstanding the hurts it can be from different forms it could start from our house domestic problems problems in our workplace problems in the church problems in the society like what we are facing right now we do not know how to react to it but we know how to express ourselves that is to be being impatient god has got a different idea how to deal with this james is revealing how god wants us to handle the situation if you have if you do remember in the in the past sections of james writing he always asks a question and he also gives an answer here he doesn't post any question but he gives us the ways how we need to treat ourselves during difficult situations if you look into the starting verses of chapter 5 the very first verse in chapter 5 he starts the verses by addressing the rich people he is warning the rich people he starts by saying you rich you rich people weep and groan but when he comes here to the seventh verse whatever we are looking today he starts by saying dear brothers and sisters so the thing here is first he is addressing starts addressing the people who were rich and who were doing things that were detestable to god he starts there and now he is turning his attention to people who were the victims so he starts by saying dear brothers and sisters be patient be patient brothers and sisters this virtue which most of us don't handle it properly if you remember romans 12 12 it says joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer right we all know this verse by heart but we do not have the patience see he continues to say be patient till what till the lord's coming he gives a time frame till the lord's coming so this patience we need to have is not going to be a short lived that's going to be forever till his second coming so when you look into the very first verses here in the chapter 5 he was starting addressing the rich and now he is going for the victims so when the lord's second coming is going to be 
the persecutors or the rich are the one who are going to be fear for the lord is coming but we as believers we patiently endure everything and we anticipate our lord's second coming see like he also says that how we need to use this patience a person without christ in his life he has to undergo a lot of frustration because he is looking at the affliction and the trials and the tribulations the mistreatment with a different anger because he doesn't have the peace and he doesn't have the patience in him as believers we have this supernatural ability to endure the miseries of life because we have been gifted with the indwelling of the holy spirit that is the supernatural ability we have this indwelling of the holy spirit gives us a lot of advantages over an unbeliever he lives in us he lives through us and he guides us and guards us and he prompts us what to do and what not to do but most of the time we ignore the prompting of the holy spirit's guidance so we need to have the patience which is a faith inspired response the christians and believers we must endure the sufferings in this world that's what this whole passage is going to be whatever we are now looking 7 to 12 so how can we do this how can we do the right thing when everything is wrong around us so james in this section he is giving us four commands he is giving us four commands two positive commands we need to embrace and two negative commands that we need to avoid watch carefully like we have got four commands the very first two are going to what we need to take it like do we need to embrace it the very first command is be patient the very first command is how we respond in the right way when when everything is going wrong how do we do it he himself is giving an answer in the second line of the very first verse seventh verse sorry seventh verse it says consider the farmer who patiently wait for the rain in the fall and in the spring which means how a farmer is waiting patiently through the growing season before he can reap the fruit of his labor so it is our ability to wait in tranquility you don't want to wait restlessly that's totally an opposite of virtue of waiting restlessly see god has got a better plan 
for each and every one of us he has got plans we look into the second command what he is saying is next to be patient he says we need to strengthen our heart if you look into verse 8 he says he emphasizes again you too must be patient and take courage take courage that's what he is saying like that is strengthen our hearts it relates the sec- the second command it relates how we should respond when we are going through this distressful circumstances it's again an emotional way of expressing um things during this stressful period during this um testing times we always undergo a kind of a stress our hearts become so heavy but the spirit of the lord can lighten the load of our heaviness how do i say this it's in the verse in psalms 55:22 we all know this verse cast your burden upon the lord and he will sustain you he will never allow the righteous to be shaken and in the same way he says that we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand casting all our anxieties because he cares for us first peter 5 6 and 7 and how do we do this strengthening our hearts during this testing times we have seen a lot of um biblical characters who have lived a life undergoing a lot of enduring right from abraham we see david we see joseph we see mordecai right like lot of people going through a lot of pressures but we will look into joseph especially here how he endured and how things changed it's called a 50 20 principle there is a purpose for me saying that 50 20 principle if you look into genesis right from chapter 37 all the way up to 50 it is all about joseph It's all about Joseph. He was a person who was dropped into the pit and then to the prison and then to the palace. So pit to prison to palace. He was enduring a lot of things. The 50-20 principle is if you read Genesis 50 chapter 20 he says to his brothers as for you you meant evil against me but god meant it for good good in the sense for what in order to bring about this present result this present result to preserve many people alive Okay now we we'll look into the third part command what here James is given here which is a negative one which we don't want to embrace which we want to avoid that is don't complain we believers whenever we undergo a lot of sufferings and lot of trying situations 
which is testing our patience we always have a tendency to complain this is this is not new to us this started with the very first sin when we look into adam, when god commanded adam and eve not to eat the fruit of life the knowledge tree they disobeyed right that's the time when sin entered this world and when god questions adam he immediately says the woman whom you gave she was the one who gave the fruit and when he was asked this question she blames it on the serpent so complaining is a very very bad habit which we want to avoid look at the present situation in our world when everybody is playing the blame game this is so common in our family in our business in our workplace even in churches so let us not vent our frustration on people who are around us we have already seen actually this um, blame game which we shouldn't do it in chapter 4 uh, where he says like those who James is saying like those who speak against or judge a fellow Christian they will be subject to the judgment of God that we see in James 4 12 11 and 12 so equally here the serious issue of complaining or pointing fingers they will also be subjected to the disciplining of God we know this verse Romans 8:1 by heart by saying God doesn't judge believers with condemnation or hell. However, we don't let our bitterness and bad habits or behavior go without discipline. Just as a loving father who disciplines his children for good, which we see in um hebrews 12 verses 5 to 11 see like this patience in suffering he focuses on the second part of this um 11th verse for instance you know job a very good example where James is focusing into that cannot be any other person we could quote from the bible who had patiently endured the huge suffering what job had undergone he endured this incomprehensible personal financial physical losses you know that we just now finished the book of job right look at the losses he has gone through but still he refused to give to give any reflex of revenge right he was at most demonstrating his real faith through that genuine patience James is reminding us that Job's suffering was temporary. Eventually giving way to abundant blessing, right? Abundant blessing that reflected the compassion and mercy of God. In the same way when we patiently endure hardship today without grumbling and when we can rely on god's promise of ultimate reward and blessing 
whether that blessing is going to be here in this earth on life or on the life to come but we have to break the habit of complaining you always think of this verse from job 23:10 he says like where he knows the way i go and when we have been purified as gold we will be glorified right mm. we have to endure this not complain not grumbling and finally the fourth point he says don't swear we do not know where we got this swearing issue even jesus is talking about the swearing issue always do respond with a yes or a no in matthew 5 i think like james is much inspired of these verses from jesus he is saying like don't take an oath don't swear anything there is one good explanation to elaborate on this one why we want to say just a simple yes and a simple no when we want to answer certain things when we are in trouble we according to our thinking we try to give more explanations have you ever thought of about this giving more explanation whenever we are in trouble we never say yes or a no or give a simple answer we try to elaborate on a lot of things we give very detailed excuses you know what happens this kind of over analysis lead us to a point where we will not find any words further to say what next that's the reason god is saying whenever we are put into question always give an answer simple answer yes or no but again we have to speak the truth because truth is the best vindication against any slander we have to stay with the truth but don't exaggerate the truth again don't deny the truth and don't hesitate to say the truth okay four commands we saw being patient strengthening our hearts which we want to embrace it whatever we want to avoid we saw that we shouldn't complain and we shouldn't swear and finally we have got like four applications i want to share with you and then we will close it how we have to do the right thing when everything around is going wrong just four uh, applications the first thing whenever we are undergoing a tight situation or a difficult situation don't focus on the situation don't look at the situation or else we will get a lot of anger and bitterness we need to stay calm let us not look into the people who have wronged us or things that are going around us wait patiently for the lord stay calm focus on him resist all our reflexes of anger bitterness blaming just patiently wait for him do not wait restlessly i insist on that don't wait rest restlessly and the second point is during this difficult times let us not focus on ourselves let us not have any self pity on us but as i told you follow the 50 20 principle what joseph was saying even in this difficult situation god is using that difficult situation as a tool right god is using that difficult situation as a tool 
that may be causing difficulty or damage but you know what the one who is living within us is bigger than the one who is outside so we have to be thankful to god for this situation even in this difficult situation god is with us he is holding our hands help us walk through this valley this difficult situation is going to express the grace of god during this tightening period it's the grace of god that is leading us let god get us through it and accomplish his purpose and let us be strong in that and then the third point i want to say is let us not focus on someone to blame the situation whatever be the situation but instead let us use this difficult times to shape our lives what god has given and what he has desired to transform us let this be the true tools for us to grow spiritually whatever be the situations that are going around us let that tool bring us more endurance in us and put us in the right path so we will have the right spirit in us so we will not be able to blame anybody or grumble against anybody and the fourth important point is let us not focus on the present let's look into the future with an insight with a vision from god what god has got for us this is this is going to be a tough one for us everyone has gone through this but when we want to look into the future we need to have the perception of god with the human vision we cannot achieve anything the reason why i say this we will look in we will turn to romans 8:18 to have this future vision we i will read just three verses which will give us the future vision and we'll close with that first i will read romans 8:18 for i consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us right we we know these verses whatever verse i'm going to read almost everybody knows it but we most of the time do not know when to apply these verses right this is the right time during difficult times let us have the perception of god looking beyond things what he is seeing because whenever we focus on the distressful situation we will see the huge wall a big fire we will always see the goliath but we want to see how david looked into he had the vision of god so i will read the second verse which is from second corinthians 4:17 to 18 for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and finally first peter first chapter verses 6 to 7 and this you greatly rejoice 
even though now for a little while if necessary you have been distressed by various trials so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold which is perishable even though tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ make this perspective a part of how we think we do not know what is in store in the coming days in the coming weeks you do not know i do not know but god knows lot of things whatever we are facing now are all uncertainties we see a lot of confusion chaos we are experiencing it we are seeing it but we have to be patient patient with what we need to be patient with our hearts being strengthened and without any grumbling let us endure this with the strength from our eternal god lord we thank you for this wonderful time lord thank you for your presence thank you for riveting this message deep into our hearts lord thank you for your words it is always active and alive lord though this book was written centuries ago this will not deny any of the facts any of the truth that you want to give us lord we always look into your words that will guide us in the right way as it is written lord your word is a lamp unto our feet light unto our path that will lead us to an eternal path You've given us the strength the endurance to pursue through these difficult times lord we have got a lot of emotions mixture of bags of emotions but lord you control them mm. give us the vision that you are seeing always be with us you have commanded us lord even during difficult situation you will never leave us nor forsake us thank you for your faithfulness lord we are all having experiencing some kind of difficulties during this time in the past in the present in the future we do not know lord but you know you are the sovereign lord who created this world and you know the end from the beginning we are always finite people with the vision only with 2020 lord we always look back and see how you have blessed us and you have brought us this far with your plan and with your purpose with your timing help us to surrender our wills and yield completely to you lord so that you will be able to mend us mold us in the way that you want to be that our lives will look better in your eyes lord let us always look into your face and you will strengthen us with your mercy and with your grace thank you for being with us and riveting this message lord in the name of all our jesus christ amen 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 amen, amen.